Hi guys, welcome back. Now today I'm going to have this heart-to-heart -heart discussion with you about money. Money is a topic we don't talk enough with friends, close family members, simply because we are concerned about how other people think about us in a lot of ways. But in this channel, I always share things very openly with you. And today's topic about five things I wish I knew about money earlier. Hopefully it inspires you and let's run to the first point, which is you may be overestimating what someone else is earning. Now, quick story. I used to be in the army camp, armor army camp, which means I repaired tanks. And one fine day, an army staff sergeant actually drove his Alpha Romeo into the camp, into the workshop itself, actually. Bling bling, it looked fantastic. Everybody was, wow, so amazed by that new car, which could probably possibly cost 150000 or his entire bonus, at least. And what that really struck to me is that when people flash their monies at you, a new car, a new dress, a new holiday, very often than not, you would overestimate what they're earning. You might have that sense of envy. Wow, that dude's earning so much, filthy rich. These kind of negative keywords, which causes you to become unhappy. So first thing to take note, people who tend to you know, flash their bling, flash their cash at you, you may be overestimating their earning power. And that leads to the second part, which is a little bit contrary to this. You may also be underestimating someone else's earning power. Now, why do I say that? You know, when we're in our 20s, our starting salaries are all about 50 to 70,000, thereabouts, regardless of industry. But very soon, you realize that in every industry, there is a career progression, correct? Even in teachers, you become senior teachers, uh, HOD, your doctor, your junior doctor, houseman, you become a specialist. As I translate, the jumps are big. Everybody starts off with this, but the jumps are big. Similar to baby, every baby is roughly the same, at it, one year, two years. Raw, crawling, talking, roughly the same. But when they reach six, seven years old, you realize the gap is different for different parenting. Same with this. And why do I say so that you may be underestimating someone else's earning power? When you are colleagues, maybe in your starting career, everybody's earning the same. But then you see people make different choices in career, get rewarded differently, have the right networking connections, and they move on to different paths. And very soon you realize that the earnings are very different. Someone else, who start off as your colleague could be earning twice your amount now. So don't carry that your own path and extrapolate someone else because very soon if you realize that it might come as a shock to you and cause a lot of unhappiness. You know, I'm in financial advisory work and collecting salary is a funnel of understanding a person's someone else's finances. And what I can safely say is that the big gap in salary really comes in at 30s and 40s. After 10 years of work, people move on to senior management levels and the income level is very different if you don't ask about it you may be underestimating it so that's a surprising finding hopefully it tells you the right thing also because if you google search i realize also there are websites that kind of give estimates of industry i do a lot of research presentation for you on this channel you do know that so smash on like button it helps us reach bigger audiences together and it has taken our team hours to produce this i realized that you know uh, websites like this, Glassdoor, they tend to give blanket numbers. If you search salary, lawyer's average salary, you'll see 100,000 as base pay. Now, I do know quite a lot of lawyers. I have a lot of pri private client lawyers also, and I can safely tell you that number is very conservative. Maybe base pay is 100,000. If you factor in variable, that number is going to be changed drastically. So don't rely on all these to get yourself personal satisfaction. If you need to be motivated, uh, then uh, use it correctly also. But that leads on to the third point that I have for you today is when you earn past a certain number, the benefits kind of diminish also. So do keep that in mind. You're not chasing money and salary for the sake of chasing it. There are research reports that came out before. This is in 2010. That if you earn past $70,000, all your stress-free needs have been attained. You can buy a house, you can buy a car, you can go for a holiday, you can raise a family. Now, if we think about you know money as in ways to make basic needs, raise family, then really after $70,000, it's all material, which means a bigger car, a bigger, better holiday, which need not really mean a lot of happiness to you. So that's also why Gary Vaynerchuk has this to share. Self-made millionaire, young people should aspire to $70,000, not millions. Because millions, you want to make it, you need to have certain skill set, stress, ability to cope with problems, differently. So again, keep that in mind. Maybe 2010, that number is 70,000. Maybe in today's number, that number could be 90,000. But beyond that, everything else has diminishing returns. 
And that leads me also to the next point that I'd like to share with you and really try to inspire you differently, which is this. How you earn your money is more important than how much you earn. Think about it. I'm in sales, which means the numbers are variable. I've seen colleagues doing way, way bigger than me. But there are a few points that this really strikes to also. This is also mentioned by Gary Vaynerchuk. And I'll repeat again, how you make your money is more important than how much money you make. Why? Because firstly, do you sacrifice your family, your loved ones in the process of chasing after money? You're neglecting them, you're downplaying them, you're disrespecting them, etc, etc. Do you sacrifice your own morals in pursuit of money? Because if you did, very soon you realize you are miser miserable with all the regrets and stuff. It's not happiness with more money, it's regrets and dissatisfaction with your own choices. So keep that in mind, especially if you're a working, young working adult, hopefully this strikes you at the right point of time. If you are someone, you know, tail end of career, something to share, also leave in the comment section. I hope the community can, community can hear new stories also. And that leads to the fifth point that I'd like to share with you. Whatever level of wealth you get to, you could still be unhappy. Now, why, why do I say that? There's actually a theory for it, fantastic theory, and it's called hedonic treadmill. Go and Google search on it after this video. It might explain things a lot deeper than what I can. But let me start with the premise. First, you have a desire. When you don't have a car, you want a car. When you don't have a Mercedes, you want a Mercedes. When you have that desire, you will try to get it, correct? You'll be aspiring to make that money, save that money up. And once you get it, very soon you quickly adapt to it. When you don't have a car, you think, oh, at least I get a small car, sure. But then once you get a small car, you want that Mercedes because inside a small car, the features are boring. People look at you like you're a grab driver only. It's kind of a thing. What I'm trying to suggest is you really adapt to that benefit, that shortness very quickly and that happiness, that desire changes into this unhappiness. It's a vicious cycle which keeps you unhappy, which keeps you chasing material gains. That is why I've also this previous video, if you haven't seen it, I'll leave links below, on lifestyle creep, simply because you are chasing after a new thing that, as you're trying to fulfill your own happiness. If you're unaware of hedonic treadmill, you are on it, which means you're chasing the bigger car. If a Mercedes, you're chasing a bigger car, such as a Ferrari. I do have a neighbor, next, next block, that is driving a Ferrari. So wherever neighborhood you get to, you see different levels of wealth and you are still be thinking, hey, if I get to that level, you'll be happy. That's not necessarily the case. So hopefully these five points strike you, these five points resonate with you to think about money differently so that you pursue happiness together with money. Money is for you to get what you want in life. Beyond that, don't chase it blindly. I have my own experiences and family history. That's why I actually this previous sharing. This was a topic that I touched on quite some time ago. Why my, my, why my direction of money actually changed? Because something happened to my family. It's a very personal sharing. It's a very touch hard sharing. Something that happened that shaped my approach to finances. Hopefully, if you haven't heard the story, it can inspire you further. Inviting you there as I sign off from here. Take care again. I'll see you in a future video. Goodbye.